have heard way too much slander for every single one of these songs, and I can't take it anymore. I will not be deceived, I will not be fooled, I will not be tricked by what Stan Twitter is trying to tell me. These songs are good, and I'm here to spread the truth. Listen here, haters, I'm right, and you're wrong. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today, we'll be talking about K-pop songs that got way too much hate for how good they are. It's no secret that the K-pop community heavily relies on bandwagons to decide which songs are good or not, but the problem is, most of the time, they're wrong. I genuinely think sometimes these K-pop stands just flip a coin to decide whether or not they like a song, and while I'm not expecting a huge typed out reasoning as to why a song is good or not in somebody's eyes, today I'm just gonna do a little bit of fighting back. Espa already proved that you can change the general consensus on a track if you try hard enough, and I'm here to do my part to redeem my favorites that got treated so poorly by K-pop stands. Thank you all so much for tuning in, sorry to keep you waiting so long, and without further ado, let's get into the first song. Now, I know there's been a little bit of pushback against tracks that are supposed to quote-unquote grow on you, but Ring X Ring is the exception to this. I hated it at first too, I'm not even gonna lie, but once you get it, you get it, it is so worth those few extra listens. At first, the constant changes in instrumentals are so jarring that you can't even pay attention to what's happening in the music, but once your ears get used to it, the futuristic and almost cyberpunk sound they have going on is super easy to get into and you'll almost forget that you didn't like it at first. I really love the experimental and innovative sounds that they use, the little like Ha huh, sounds that they put in the chorus sound so cool, and this is overall just one of, if not the most unique track we've gotten this year. I must say, I still absolutely despise that rap, I don't know why they decided to put that in there, especially because one of the members has so much experience pre-debut in shows like Unpretty Rap Star and Training Under YG, like she obviously has so much talent I don't know why they decided to give her that awfully written rap, they need new songwriters or something. But if they can fix that for their next comeback, I don't know, I might be standing. We'll see. I'm sort of convinced that everybody who hates Thrill Ride just hates fun, because it was good on first listen, and it's always gonna be good. First of all, both of the vocal hooks present in this song are some of the catchiest things that I've ever heard in my life. The simplicity and repeatability of do 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 is gonna be stuck in my brain for at least a few more years, and the general upbeat and happy energy this song has is so infectious. I've seen a lot of people express their disdain for the presence of sirens in the instrumental, but considering the theme of this comeback was a mix mixture of roller coaster and water park, and the fact that the sirens are mixed pretty quietly into the background, for me personally, it's more of a small detail that actually enhances the listening experience if you're paying hard enough attention, and Thrill Ride is already so goofy where it doesn't really feel out of place. It perfectly fits in, in my opinion. Like we already have horns, cymbals, and even cowbell in the instrumental, I don't think sirens are too much. Another summer bop, and for this one, I gotta tell you guys, listen to it with some good headphones if you can. The percussion and dumpty dumpty, ooh, chef's kiss. I genuinely think that's a big reason why so many people have a disdain for dumpty dumpty. People don't realize that at any single point in dumpty dumpty, there are two, three, or even four layers of percussion going on at the same time. But if you ever take the time to really focus on it, you can feel it with your entire chest. People have criticized Dumpty Dumpty for sounding too simple, but one of Soyeon's greatest strengths as a producer is that she's able to make a complex song without it sounding confusing. Music doesn't have to be experimental to have depth and complexity, and Dumpty Dumpty is just one of Idol's tracks that embody this fact. Also, just Soyeon's rapping, can we talk about it for a second? One of the best rap verses that has ever been present in a K-pop song, and that's not just talking about female groups, that's boy groups included. Her flow and the ability to seamlessly change the sound of her voice is so impressive, and that's how you make a rap verse engaging with having a first half and a second half all within 20 seconds. Everything about Dum Dee Dum Dee to me is perfection, and it's not just a summer bop. I'll listen to it at any point in the year. I'll probably be listening to it during Christmas. I 
I just stand ATs, so if I stand another group, it's gonna take a while, but when I do, nature is gonna be high on the priority list. Perfectly capturing the teen crush sound present in groups like Itzy or Wikimiki, in this song, nature takes this sound and evolves it, turning it into something that truly stands out within this genre. One of my favorite things is how in the chorus, they take the harmonies and actually make them just as loud as the regular vocal lines. A lot of people dislike the repetitive lyrics in the chorus because they basically just repeat oopsie my bad the entire time, and usually I would feel the same way if they didn't have those harmonies. The harmonies give you something new to listen to, and it makes the argument that the lyrics are too repetitive feel like a cop-out answer, because the chorus stays interesting the entire time, to the point where the lyrics don't even feel important because they're not the main focus, the harmonies are. I'm surprised Nature never really grabbed a huge international audience because they have a really quirky and niche sound that is so appealing, and while it's not for everyone, it's definitely for me. Despite still being one of my least favorite MCND tracks, they have few to no skips in their entire discography, and when you separate it from the rest of the music, some of the elements within Top Gang were way too impressive to just be a pre-debut single. My absolute favorite part of Top Gang is how every single rapper gets a full 40 second verse to themselves, and each one is able to accidentally show off their skills while displaying their charisma and charm at the same time. Most rap verses within K-pop are 15 to 20 seconds at most, and Top Gang plays with this expectation, putting deliberate build ups in the instrumental to make you believe they're gonna switch off to a different member, but then trick you with the same member continuing their rap verse but changing their flow to show off a different side of their skills. Every single thing about Top Gang feels so intentional, with the important beats feeling explosive and the more mellow parts of the song having perfect transitions from the general noisy attitude that this song takes. To put it shortly, Every single thing about Top Gang is masterfully put together, and I cannot recommend this group enough. I was a little bit adverse to Scientist at the beginning because it didn't seem as catchy as Twice's other titles, but... Ugh, boy was I wrong. I'm singing in that chorus at least 15 times a day because it has just taken over all of my thoughts. The brilliance within Scientist really does lie within its subtlety. First of all, it's in a lower key than almost all of their songs that they've ever released, which is so pleasant to the ear. Being able to hear the members sing when they're not being forced to sound like chipmunks is one of the best things that's ever happened in 2021. Not that they ever sound bad, that's not what I'm trying to imply. But everything from the tempo to the instrumental to the vocal lines all sound very laid back, and this Mature sound on Twice is giving them songs that are gonna age to perfection, still having longevity after 10, 20, 30 years from now. Even if it's not resonating as well with the public, Twice's new sound is really making some of the best songs that they've ever put out, and I really hope they continue making music together. Do I think Bicycle is a perfect song? Definitely not but it did not deserve all of the hate that it got. Okay, I will admit, the rap was not the best thing I've ever heard, but it was not as bad as people were making it out to be. Shangha's flow is actually pretty decent, and I think if she gets some better lyricists, she'll able to kill it next time around. One thing I do absolutely just love is that pre-chorus. The combination of background vocals and eerie instrumentals are able to create a really immersive experience, and when the chorus does hit, I think it gives something catchy and memorable that, while a little bit corny, is sort of iconic. The Mellow Bridge was also a fantastic creative choice by whoever made this song, and I think the minimalistic structure of it is able to provide some nice contrast from the chorus, keeping the song interesting, and it ages pretty well over time. And that concludes this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and let me know what you thought of my choices. Do you think these songs deserve the hate that they got, or are you like me and you enjoyed them? Definitely let me know in the comments, and also tell me some songs that you think got too much hate from the K-pop community. Thank you all again so much for watching, and without further ado, See you next time.